and shares of App Levin now taking a hit this morning. The stock is now more than 40% off of its all-time high. Software maker for app developers delivering record quarterly revenue and adjusted EBITDA. But 2022 revenue guidance coming in lower than the street was hoping for. Joining us now, App Levin CEO Adam Perugi. Adam, good to see you. Um, first, I want to talk about these Google and Apple uh, identifier and, and sort of uh, data privacy changes because uh, I'm not sure investors understand App Levin's structure. I, I want your uh, perspective on it. You actually have first party data as part of your structure. You might be less affected by this, but what's your outlook on what Google and Apple are doing and how it affects your business? Yeah, thanks for having me. And the Apple changes that you're talking about, the privacy changes, really rolled out six, seven months ago, middle of last year. And Google announced just yesterday that they're going to follow suit and try to make privacy changes over the next couple of years to remove an identifier that allows advertising companies to target um, consumers with better ads based on third-party data. Now, why we've been able to perform so well in the last year and why we're very confident about our business going forward is we have a games business that has 200 million plus monthly active users playing our content, giving us first party data. And our own data is what's fueling our software business, our advertising platform to perform so well. This combination and this dependency on our own data sets us up really well as the marketplace goes to more privacy centric ways to do marketing. Yeah, that was my take. I was a bit surprised to see uh, your stock specifically dipping, it seemed, on the Google privacy news. But then, you know, valuations are what they are. So who knows why these things are moving? Now, you get to the issue of you have this games, apps business, and also the broader software platform. It's the apps business, right, where growth was disappointing. So uh, what is your outlook for how you expect those things to balance out? It certainly seems like the software platform business is the future. Yeah, let's talk about that and then the reaction to our earnings. We had a $3.7 billion revenue guidance versus $3.8 billion consensus, which on headline looks like a miss, and the stock got hit. But let's go a level deeper. The gaming business, which trades at three times revenue because the revenue's less margin than the software business, we guided down $400 million because the gaming business is a large, mature business, and we get the data that we need at the scale we're at. Now, the software business is ripping. It grew a ton last year, and we guided up 300 million. So guiding a 20 times revenue multiple business plus 300 million should have really added $4.8 billion of market cap or 20% up. But people didn't look deeper to realize our software business, which is the core part of our business, the way we generate cash is what's growing at, at crazy rates. We're projecting over 100% growth this year to it. And once you really realize that, you realize this is a great buying opportunity in the stock. Right. So, Adam, if you do have access to that first party data and that's driving your software business, is there more that you can be doing with it? I mean, you see Google's results in light of those Apple privacy changes. I know it's at a much different scale, but is there something you're missing here that you could be doing or moving into with your unique position and having that data that many others don't have? Well, let's talk about what we're doing. The software business in 2020 did 200 million. Last year, almost 700 million. Now we're projecting over 1.4 billion. And then next year, we're projecting approximately $2 billion. So, so that's 10x growth in three years to a software business that's exceptionally high margin. I think we're doing pretty well with the business right now.